Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Looking at some keys to victory for both teams in this ballgame, starting with Kansas City, I think for the Chiefs, it's a lot about the matchups that they have in this ballgame, seeing that this is the second time they face this football team this year. So one of the biggest matchups I'm looking at is between their nose tackle, Jay Howard, and Ben Jones, the center of the Texans. You want to stop this ground game and make Houston one-dimensional, and I think Howard can play a big part in doing so by winning those battles up front versus Jones. And they can't be afraid to double J.J. Watt. Don't allow your pride to get in the way of your team's success. Don't be afraid to double him, whether that's in a running game or in pass protection, and that way your offense can have a little bit more success moving the football. And I think another matchup to watch in this ballgame is with their outstanding rookie cornerback, Marcus Peters, going up against wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. He had an interception in the first meeting, and now he has the confidence, he has the experience, so it'll be interesting to see what he has brought to the table now in the playoffs as opposed to what he had at, which was pretty good in week one versus Hopkins. Hopkins has to win that battle for the Texans and definitely for the Chiefs. They want Peters to win this battle and force Hoyer to go to other targets consistently. Moving over to the Texans in this ballgame, I think it's an obvious thing that you have to move the pocket for Brian Hoyer. He's an athletic guy. Give him different launch pad spots to get rid of the football in the passing game. I think that can help these guys out offensively. And Houston can't beat themselves. No false starts, no penalties, no turnovers. Those things will get you beat, which is one of the reasons why they lost this first game versus Kansas City. Clean up the mistakes, and they can play winning football. And I think they have to keep Alex Smith within the pocket. He's their second-leading rusher. He also does a great job in extending the play with his legs, forcing him to be a consistent and accurate passer within that tackle-to-tackle -tackle box. I think that's one way Houston can really neutralize a lot of what Kansas City does offensively from a movement standpoint. Kansas City has to find ways to disrupt the timing of the passing game of the Houston Texans, and I think they can do a great job again like they did in the first meeting earlier in the season with delayed pressure, and I'm going to show you how they can get that done. I love the personnel that, that the Kansas City Chiefs have in the secondary. You see right here, pre-snap, it looks like cover three, and really it is going to be cover three, but you're protecting yourself underneath with one, two, three, I'm sorry, three, four guys dropping back in coverage, but you want to give the illusion of a blitz. So you're going to walk this linebacker up close to the line of scrimmage. And so now the quarterback sees a linebacker walking up, sees a linebacker here, strong skip to tight to the line of scrimmage. He's thinking, okay, they're coming. I got to check out of this play. But really, you're dropping this guy back into the hook the curl area. This backer here is dropping back in his curl out responsibility. Rush here. You're going to get this guy to get a good push on the center and push that strong side A gap. And this is where the the delayed pressure comes from. This inside backer on the strong side is going to wait till this nose tackle decides which gap he wants to take, and he's taking the opposite gap. So you're getting double A gap pressure here, and have this tackle push outside, contain pressure. Linebacker is going to get a good bump on that tight end, and just drop back and hook the curl. Strong safety is playing curl out. Now you got these guys dropping back in their deep third. So boom, cover three, but you're getting delayed pressure with this inside backer hopefully influencing a bad decision in the curl out zone where you have a backer and you have a strong safety waiting to pick off a pass and maybe coming across late will be this backer dropping back in coverage after he fakes uh, the blitz going down at A or B gap weak side. So this is one way I think Kansas City with how creative they've been defensively and how aggressive they are within their front seven and their pressure packages can disrupt a lot of what the Houston Texans want to do offensively. Versus Kansas City the second time around, I think the Houston Texans can have some success in the passing game, attacking three over two. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. It's all about formation, and the Houston Texans do a great job in spreading the formation. So you see right here, a spread set two by two. We're going to put the tight end closer to the line of scrimmage, so we still have the threat of the running game right here with the tailback. But what we're attacking is this side of the formation. You have three defenders over two wide receivers, and there's a great deal of of uh, advantage for the offense because in this situation you have 
equal numbers because again you still have the threat of the running game going strong side but what we're going to do here is we're going to attack this free safety we're going to put him in the bind and we're going to create a two-on-one situation to where brian hoyer or brandon wheaton can have an opportunity to hit a big play intermediate or deep down the field so what we're going to do with the guy at the top of the cluster we're going to work him up push up and then go to the post we're going to have this guy working underneath and crossing the free safety's face. You see we've created a two-on-one situation. Even if it's man coverage, and you have the free safety taking the receiver going across his face, and a cornerback taking a guy that's uh, closest to him coming out of the cluster, it's still one-on-one, -on -one and you want to trust your big play wide receivers. Now, let's say off of play action, fake the handoff here, and that even allows these guys to get into their routes. What you have coming front side, you have the tight end that can easily push up to that strong safety and then cross over either pulling him in which vacates the space here for this guy going across the field which puts this free safety in even in big a bigger bind now you also have the receiver that can work out down the sideline take off route you created a one-on-one -on -one situation and push come to shove you have your running back out in the flat so now you've created a three on two situation front side but you really want to attack the three on two situation here because it puts a receiver one on one with the free safety and or a corner. And you want to trust your guy to make that play more often than not. So again, especially versus an aggressive defense like Kansas City, there's opportunities for Houston to have big plays this time around in the passing game. Points will be at a premium in this ball game and both defenses, I believe, will come ready to play. So once you get inside the red zone, you're going to have to put points up on the board and preferably touchdowns. I'm going to show you how Kansas City can do that inside the red zone. They did a great job in a first meeting getting the tight end involved. I'm going to explain that in film session, how they exploited the coverage. But one of my favorite plays inside the red zone is coming back off of play action because the tight end or fullback is always wide open in the end, in the end zone. So I'm going to show you how they can do that with this play. They're faking strong side run because again you have the tight end on this side you have the h back on this side plus a fullback so everything screams to you as a defense okay they're coming front side and kansas city has still been able to run the football so any action going front side to the again to the side where you have the tight end and the h back is going to influence everybody plus you have the offensive linemen all moving in that direction which is important now you're going to have this tackle and tight end combo block this five technique that's going to be important because he's going to Get a good block and slowly work himself back across the field. You guys have seen this play before many a times. So now you have everyone's coming front side, faking the running back action. You're booting Alex Smith around. You're going to have the receiver go across the field because, again, that action, the faking the run, is going to get flow going this way. Now he sees the receiver going. That's why you create this big void on the backside for this tight end. Now the kicker. You're going to work this H-back back, back across the formation and out in a flat. So now Alex Smith has two options. Either hit this guy short or hit this guy deep. Nine times out of ten, this guy is going to recognize what's going on. and is going to try to pull this short defender, leaving this guy wide open. Or if he thinks that this tight end is going to cross and he sees him as he's chasing this wide receiver, he's going to peel back and take the tight end, leaving him, leaving him open. If both guys are covered, you can trust Alex Smith's running ability and athleticism to make a play one-on-one -on -one in space. And this is one way I think Kansas City can have success inside the red zone versus the Houston Texans. We know that the Texans defense has gotten better over the course of the season. A big reason why they find themselves in the playoffs and in this ball game versus Kansas City the second time around. You see that's going to be the theme in Wild Card Weekend. I think they have to do a better job of getting pressure on Alex Smith. I'm going to show you what we're talking about here. Let's say this is third and medium and they want to get off the field and they know, and they know Alex Smith really wants to get the football out of his hands quickly. Show you what we're talking about. You're going to pre-snap looks like cover one and that's really what it is, is or it looks like cover three but it's really cover one. You have your corners manned up outside. They trust their corners as well as does Kansas City. So they're pressed on the outside trying to force those guys to the sideline where they have the sideline as their friend as their help defender but if someone does get inside you have free safety help back deep now what you're doing up front you're gonna have this backer crash hard inside of that tight end cross his face but taking an outside shoulder of that offensive tackle you kind of want him to pull this way because you have the five techniques slanting in that strong side b gap which is important because you have strong side a gap pressure coming from the nose tackle now 
Here, you want to run a little game between the five tech and the outside backer. Take him outside, hopefully taking him with you. Boom, right there, B gap, and you're dropping these guys underneath. So again, so you're protected underneath by the strong safety, the two inside backers, and you're trusting your guys on the outside because they can play press coverage on these wide receivers. You want to force a quick throw, and if Alex Smith decides to, okay, I want to vacate and get outside the pocket, you have speed coming that can get pressure with a contained defender outside, which could be J.J. Watt, or in this situation, you can use Jadevian Clowney. However they want to get creative, they do have the flexibility within their front seven. So one way they can get strong side pressure on third and medium while trusting their personnel on the back end to make a play and hopefully getting off the field. I think the Chiefs do a great job of exploiting coverages and here in the first matchup this season versus Houston, Kansas City used a three tight end look inside the green zone which is from the 10 yard line going in and they ran a triple layer route concept with the second tight end running the drag, the tight end nearest the offensive lineman ran the in route and the outside tight end ran the skinny post. Now this combo put the matchup zone the Texans were in in a bind as the weak side safety couldn't get over in time to make a play. So it will be interesting to see the second time out what new wrinkles Kansas City will put within their offense, especially inside the red and green and even inside the blue zone, which is inside the five yard line. As we all know, the second matchup, the second meeting between two squads in one season, is all about adjustments. Communication and effort is everything defensively. And here versus New Orleans, you see a ton of communication going on by the Texans defense, which is great. However, there's a thing called too much communication and that could lead to blown assignments like you see here at the bottom of the screen, the wide receiver is wide open. However, the effort here by the defensive back on this play leads to an interception and a short field to work with for their own offense as he returns the football to the 50 yard line. Now, in the second matchup versus the Chiefs, you want to see Houston be a little bit more decisive in their reads and keys to avoid bust, but you also want this level of intensity and effort to continue. The biggest X factor in this game for Kansas City, I talked about him earlier, it's Marcus Peters. This is a guy that's an all-pro in my book, tremendous cornerback as a rookie, and he has a tough task of going against one of the best receivers in the game for the second time around. So what adjustments has he made as a rookie going against Hopkins will ultimately determine how well they can defend the passing game of the Houston Texans. The biggest X factor in this game for the Texans, I believe, will be their ability to control the clock, and that falls squarely on the shoulders of their ground game and those tailbacks. Alfred Blue, Jonathan Grimes and company, whomever's going to get the bulk of the carries in this ball game, they have to bring their A game because if Houston can operate with some semblance of balance offensively, it goes a long way in helping these guys win the ball game because, again, a lot is based off what they can do running the football. It makes their pass protection a lot better. Their play action passing game can ultimately work. So, again, the ground game, I think, for the Texans will be the biggest X factor in this matchup. I like Kansas City in this ball game. They're red hot right now. They've won 10 straight games and they've done it with their defense and their offensive line. I think those two elements of their football team will help them go into Houston and knock off the Texans. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Chiefs fan forums and Texans fan forums for always showing football game plan support.